please give a huge round of applause and welcome the one and only Sean Mio. If you are visiting our city, welcome to London, where smiling is a sign of weakness. <laughs> we now have in London, for safety reasons, a cashless bus system. I'm used to be able to pay cash for a bus ride. Not now. For safety reasons, we have a cashless bus system. So now, if you get on a bus in London with money, you're surfed off the bus <laughs> and left on the pavement miles from home, next to skint, desperate, violent people who now know that you've got money. So, that's how safe it is. We have a mayor who's worried about the number of illegal immigrants in London. I'm more worried about the number of Albanians on the tube network who cannot play the accordion. <laughs> the goal of these people to get onto packed tube trains and then start blowing to what is quite obviously not a wind instrument. And out comes that polystyrene cup every time. For the children. For the children. I always put 20 pence in it and go for accordion lessons. Right. <laughs> we have a tube system that's expensive and not very reliable, isn't it? I'm sick and tired of showing up at tube stations and being greeted with those apologies they always make these days for delays and cancellations. Because I don't know about you guys, but to me, they never really sound oh, they're sorry, do they? They always sound a bit smug, those announcements. They always sound a bit to me like, Bing bong, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really want to apologise. <laughs> but hearing the words anyway. <laughs> That's not being sorry, is it? I mean, you try apologising to your girlfriend like that and see how far you get. <laughs> she comes screaming to the kitchen, where the hell is my Mars bar? <laughs> well, your boyfriend would like to apologise <laughs> for the disappearance of the Mars bar in the fridge in the kitchen. This was due to me being stoned out of my head <laughs> and too lazy to make a sandwich. <laughs> there will be a Mars bar replacement service in about 45 minutes' time. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a married man and, and, and it seems unbelievable, even to me now, I still can't get used to the word, like, you know, like hostage, whatever it is, right? We got married in Hawaii, right, which is very romantic, and uh, that's because I paid for it. And uh, <laughs> on the day of the marriage, we did a two-tank scuba dive in shark-infested waters. And the reason we did that was because she survived the parachute dump the day before. She's <laughs> beginning to sober up and run out of ideas. She just won't die. Anyway, listen, what she wanted to do... What she wanted to do, right, was a hot air balloon ride. Now, seriously, has anyone ever done a hot air balloon ride? Yeah. And predictably, well, listen, if you do it in this country, just beware, like, health and safety are all over it. You know, health and safety, those unsafe, unhealthy-looking people that just... <laughs> you can't stand there, you're in front of a fucking fire exit. Shut up and find a bridge and jump off it. <laughs> First thing they do, if you go on a hot air balloon ride, is they ask you how much you weigh. Wow. They ask the blokes, they weigh the women, they're not falling for that shit, are they? <laughs> Come on, off it. They want people to survive the fucking experience, don't they? The photos, they've got to have someone go, I weigh 98 pounds. Like, fuck you do, Sandra, put the pastels down, get back on the scales. <laughs> you guys probably have to, like, do jobs where you have to, like, pretend you... I, I've tried being nice, it's exhausting, isn't it? Fucking talking to someone, you'd rather fucking punch in the face, are <laughs> And you go through job interviews, right? It must be so hard, because you can't really say what you really think during a job interview, can you? You know, they sit there and they go, so why do you want the job? And you sit there and go, who the hell wants a job? <laughs> None of us want jobs. We have to get jobs, don't we? It's the only way to legally get hold of money. <laughs> without robbing people, isn't it? <laughs> I went for a job interview once. Blake said to me, he goes, where do you see yourself in five years' time? I said, having a cup of tea and a tuna sandwich. <laughs> He goes, how'd you work that out? I said, because it's lunchtime now, right? <laughs> I'm not really an expert. But I'm pretty sure in five years' time, it's still going to be lunchtime, isn't it? <laughs> I can't believe you're in charge. Now... <laughs> Once I went for a job interview, and the bloke goes, have you had this one? He goes, have you, have you got any team building skills, right? And I said, I took part in a gangbang once, right? <laughs> I did, and I came first, and that's got counts on it. Because I don't look like a loser. 
I've got a mate of mine who's in the fire brigade. Now, <laughs> how many people here think the fire brigade need more money? Yeah, well, I, think they do. I think he's right, because when you're playing three-card brag for 18 hours a day, <laughs> I think you need all the extra coins you can get your hands on. <laughs> They're nuts, aren't they, the fire brigade? Every time they go on strike, they go, we want shorter hours and better conditions. What are you talking about? An hour is 60 minutes, isn't it? There's nothing anyone can do about that. <laughs> Better conditions, for Christ's sake, the places they're going to are on fire. I mean, how much easier do you want it? 